Hi guys, my name is Carol Moros and you're watching Make Programming Fun Again. This is the fifth part of my full stack Elixir series. Over the past four videos we have built a to-do list application using React and Apollo Client, talking to a GraphQL API, built on top of Phoenix, Absinthe and PostgreSQL. In the previous video we have implemented in React the basic mutations that the application required, namely toggling and updating to the items. In this video, I would like to cover two more essential mutations, creating new to the items and deleting existing ones. And I did not cover these points in the previous video because of certain technical difficulties that I believe deserve a whole video on their own. The problem is GraphQL mutations are simple by design, but once you start keeping track of your data inside a front-end application, you need to keep your state up to date after any mutations. And the simplest solution to this problem is just fetching the data over and over each mutation. This is what we would have to do if we were using some sort of makeshift GraphQL client like the Fetch API or Axios. But Apollo client is a more sophisticated implementation with an in-memory cache. And the obvious benefit of this solution is that we make fewer queries, the application work f works faster and puts less load on our API server. The only downside is that we need to actually read the documentation to find out how to bust and update the cache. And this was relatively easy when we were only updating single existing entities, uh, like described in here. If your mutation only updates a single existing entity, Apollo client can automatically update the cache after the mutation. And to do so, you must return the ID of a modified entity along with all the values of the fields that are modified. So if you if you look at the source of our application in to do in to do list list item, we have the mutation toggle to the item that returns ID and is completed. And down here we also have the update to the item mutation that returned ID and content. And the things are more complicated with creation and deletion because uh, you are modifying the whole list of the whole list of records, and this is what I'm going to cover in this video. So, if we open the GraphQL schema, which is defined in the schema.ex file, we see that there already is a delete to the item mutation. And I do realize I have not covered this part of code in the previous videos uh, because I forgot to remove it when I was preparing for the fourth part of the tutorial. So if you are building the application from scratch, basically you will need to write this mutation right now. And this mutation takes a single argument called ID and this argument is of type non-nullable ID. And in the resolver you pattern match on the ID and then you fetch the to the item and then if it exists you delete it and then you return OK and true. And now if we open the GraphQL Playground, I have already written this mutation in GraphQL syntax. And right now we can't delete anything because we don't have the ID of a to the item. So let me quickly create a to the item that we can delete. And I call this, I call this item truth because then we can imagine that we are a journalist working with a Polish television and we are getting a six-figure salary for making truth disappear. So I will quickly create a to-do item and if we refresh this uh, to-do list application we see that truth has appeared. So right now we don't, still don't know the ID of truth but we can just open the database in PSQL and list all to the items in the database and then we see that the ID of truth is 5. So let's go back to the playground and delete the to the item with the ID of 5. So we see that delete to the item returns true and then if we go back to, to the logs we see that a delete query has been called and then if we refresh the application we see that there is no truth. Uh, so we see that uh, this mutation is working and we can just copy it over to our React application and uh, let me open the to the list item component and in that over here I will, I will assign this delete to the item mutation to a new constant 
and when I save a file it gets formatted and highlighted and we will be using the mutation in exactly the same way as the toggle and update item mutations before which means which is to say we will be calling it using the use mutation hook and the use mutation hook returns a list whose first element is a is an updating callback and therefore I I write it like this const and the list with delete item equals use mutation and I pass it delete to the item. Uh, the way this works in iCloud reminders is that you edit an item and you delete all its content then it disappears from the list. So we can try to do something similar in here. Let me quickly recreate the item. We have we have the item with truth and we we refresh the page and it, it, it appears here. And the blur callback inside of to the list item is in here. So this means that in here uh, we can say if text equals empty string then we call delete item with the variables equal to an object with id of id and then we return from the callback and we can also in here if the text is equal to content then we don't have to do anything and we return and only if if text is still uh, not an empty string and it's different from content, then we update the item. So now let's save. And we see that if we, if we blur with an empty string, then the mutation is called, but the item is not removed from the list. And the mutation is a delete to the item, which means that we can assume that the item was really deleted. So what we have to do, is like here it says in the in the mutations documentation the second argument to use mutation is as an object with options and we pass the we call that called update that takes the cache and we don't care about the second argument because we don't need any data from the mutation to actually delete the item from our list but we will need the query that we call in the first place and we will need a way to somehow remove the item from the list. So right now the query is defined in a to-do list component and we have no access to it so let me export it as a new constant. Oh, oops. Uh, this is inside of, of this list and export const get to the items equals GQL and then here I just make it use the get to the items query and back in here I import the new constant from the file to the list and down in here uh, in the use mutation hook I pass uh, the update callback that takes cache and then we can say const to the items equals cache uh, read query with query equal to get to the items and then the to the items list should contain the to the items that we have that already exist on the list. So let's first console log it. And let's see. Right now we only have two, so let's create some truth again. And now let's try to see in the console what happens. So we have a list of to the items and we can say that 
we want we can filter this list by passing it a predicate function that says only leave the items that have a different ID from seven. So item ID is different from seven. And then we, we see that we get uh, the, we get an array with only one element. So this is what we're going to, we're going to do in here. Cache write query. The query is the same get to the items as before and data will be to do items equals to do items filtered with a predicate function saying item of type to the item the item id is not equal to our own id and now let's try to do it again i create a new item and it exists in here and now i blur with an empty string and then we see that it disappeared and this is everything we needed to do about this delete to the item mutation so in fact i was planning to also cover the create to the item mutation in this video but this deletion already proved to be quite challenging and i think we'll be better off if i postpone it to the next video so if you have enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and if you have, haven't please trash me in the comments below and i will see you in the next video thank you and goodbye